Hi friends today we will study the second part of the chapter water water cycle in nature the continuous circulation of water from the earth surface to atmosphere and from the atmosphere back to the earth is called as water cycle in nature let us now understand the water cycle water is present on the earth in rivers lakes ponds oceans and soil heat from the sun evaporates water from all these places to form vapors this water vapors goes into the air the plants and trees lose water by the process of transpiration this water vapor also goes into the air the air containing water vapor is heated by the sun hot air being lighter rises high in the sky it is cold at high altitude in the sky so this water vapor gets cooled as it reaches high altitude and form tiny droplets of water to form clouds the tiny droplets join together to form a larger water droplets of water these water drops fall on the earth in the form of rain in very cold regions the water drops in the sky freezes to form snow so water also falls down to earth in the form of frozen state called snow water formed by melting of snow and some of the rain water flows into the rivers and finally goes into ocean the rain water also fills the lakes and ponds and gets absorbed by the soil some of the rain water seeps through the soil and goes under the ground in this way water which was taken from the earth returns to the earth and hence water cycle is completed the occurrence of water cycle in nature is continuous process the water cycle never ends importance of water cycle in nature friends water cycle is important because of the following main reasons water cycle makes fresh water available in the form of rain the sea water is highly salty and not fit for drinking by animals or for the growth of plants but the rain water is pure and can be utilized by animals as well as plants Water cycle keeps the amount of water on the earth surface constant. This is because the water removed from the earth during evaporation and transpiration is put back to the earth through rain and snow. So, what if it rains heavily? Every place on the earth gets rains in varying amount. In some parts of the world, it rains throughout the year, whereas in other parts it rains only for few days in a year in our country most of the rainfall occurs in the monsoon season rains gives us many advantages rains bring relief by cooling the environment after hot summer days the sowing of many crops depends on the arrival of rains during monsoon rains provide water in rivers and dams of hydroelectric power plants Rain fills the lakes and ponds which acts as source of fresh water. Rains are also responsible for the ground water which gets stored under the surface of the earth. However, the excessive rainfall leads to many problems as well. Heavy rains in city leads to water logging which disrupts the traffic on roads and cause inconvenience to people. Heavy rains may cause floods. Heavy rains lead to too much rise in water level in rivers. The river water starts overflowing from its banks and villages, crops, fields and forests causing damage to property, human life, domestic animals, standing crops and wild animals of the forests. The animals living in water are carried away by the fast flowing flood waters. These water animals often get trapped on the land areas and when the water Sirsids they die heavy rains also kill the animals living in soil because such animals do not get air to breathe when all the soil gets covered with flood water what happens if it does not rain for a long period of time if it does not rain in a region for a long time it causes drought drought is a long period without rains leading to severe shortage of water in the region Due to the heat of the sun, 
the soil continuously lose water by evaporation and transpiration the water lost by the soil is usually made up by rains if however it does not rain at all for a long period of time the loss of water from the soil is not made up and hence soil becomes dry also due to lack of rains the water levels from lakes and ponds also goes down and some of them even completely dry up due to no rains the underground water levels also falls drastically thus no rains for a prolonged period may cause drought let us see some major problems faced by peoples because of drought in an area in drought conditions the soil does not have enough water to grow crops and since crop plants do not grow well drought leads to severe shortage of food for the people in that region in drought conditions the vegetation such as grass and other fodders does not grow well and this leads to shortage of fodder for the domestic animals like cows and buffaloes due to shortage of food and fodder many people living in drought affected areas even migrate to other places along with their domestic animals in search of food and fodder some people and domestic animals may even die of starvation so how to conserve water friends only a small fraction of water available on the earth is suitable for use by human beings animals and plants this is available in rivers lakes ponds and as groundwater since all the areas of the country are not near the rivers so river water is not available at all places in the country the lakes and ponds cannot hold much water in them the groundwater is available everywhere but when it is used too much for agricultural and other purposes the level of groundwater decreases drastically and hence it cannot be used anymore thus we can say that the water available for our use is very limited and it is decreasing day by day due to its over usage with rapidly increasing population the demand for water is also increasing very fast also more and more water is been used in agriculture for producing food and by industries which manufacture large variety of products all these factors are leading to shortage of water in many parts of the world including our country looking at all this situation it is essential that water is used carefully we should take care to not to waste water to conserve water means to save water by using it carefully wisely and by preventing its wastage it is essential to conserve the water because the amount of usable water on the earth is limited and there is scarcity of usable water for various purposes Let us now see the various ways to conserve the water or minimize the wastage of water at home. Firstly, turn off the tap immediately after use. Get the leaking taps repaired immediately. Take bath by filling water in bucket and not directly under flowing tap. Wash the utensils by filling water in basin and not under running tap water. Use the water from washing rice vegetables or fruits for watering the plants at home do not use a full flush from the cistern in the toilet when the half flush is sufficient friends always remember water is precious every drop counts now let us see how we can overcome the water shortage by rainwater harvesting the activity of collecting rainwater directly and store it in big tanks for later use for making the rain water percolate into ground more efficiently to recharge the ground water is called rain water harvesting there are two main techniques of rain water harvesting number 1 collection and storage of rain water in tanks for future use when there is scarcity of water and to make rain water percolate into the ground more efficiently by constructing percolating pits and recharge well as to recharge or replenish the ground water in rural areas most of the ground has open soil due to which rain water can seep into the ground naturally to make up for the loss in ground water due to excessive use in urban areas however most of the ground is covered with buildings concrete pavements and roads as a reason 
only very little rain water seeps into the ground naturally and most of the water flows into dirty water drains and goes away so rain water harvesting is necessary in areas like cities rain water harvesting can be done in two ways number 1 rooftop rain water harvesting and rain water harvesting from open spaces around buildings rooftop rain water harvesting can be done for two purposes number 1 for collection in big tanks for later use number 2 collecting rain water and making it percolate into the ground to recharge ground water in the first method of rooftop rain water harvesting the rain water collected on the roof of a house is brought down through rain water pipe and collected in big underground tank made of concrete this water may contain soil particles from the roof and needs to be filtered before use in the second method of rooftop rain water harvesting the pipe bringing down rain water collected on the roof of house goes directly into a percolation pit made in the ground the percolation pit has a layer of broken bricks at the bottom a, ra- a layer of gravels in the middle and a layer of coarse sand at the top it is covered by a concrete slab a narrow bore hole about 3 meters deep is dug into the ground the outlet pipe coming out of the percolation pit is put inside this bore the rain water which collects on the roof of a house is brought down by the rain water pipe into the percolation pit this rain water gets filtered by the sand gravel and broken bricks in the percolation pit the filtered rain water comes out of the percolation pit through outlet pipe the outlet pipe takes the rain water deep into the ground where it can easily seep into the soil let us now understand rain water harvesting from open spaces around buildings this is done by constructing percolation pits covered with concrete slabs having holes in them and connect to a recharge well through a pipe a recharge well is about 1 meter in diameter and 3 meters deep the rain water falling in the open spaces around buildings goes into percolation pit through the holes in its concrete slab cover after filtration in percolation pit rain water enters the recharge well through outlet pipe and gradually seeps into the soil please note that the purpose of recharge well is to collect vast amount of water falling on the ground quickly when it rains and then make it seep into soil gradually the main purpose of rain water harvesting is not to hold rain water on the surface of the earth but make rain water percolate under the ground more efficiently to recharge or replenish the ground water friends that's all about water thank you for watching this video hope you liked it please do like share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification on new video thank you and all the best